Hi guys, I'm checking out the trails to hike from my home to go down to the river to spend two nights camping on the sandbars. I've never done this before. Although the river is only two miles away, it's somewhat remote and so this should be really exciting. Uh, the uh, way I'm going to do this is I'm going to start at my home, walk down to the bayou, walk along the bayou underneath the freeway, go past a second subdivision, continue along that creek until I hit the river, and then I'll, I'll spend time, most of my time along the river. When I walk and camp along the river, it will be reminiscent of the 1800s. In the 1800s, people traveled along bayous, creeks, and rivers as a way to get from place to place. Uh, this is mostly because the forest is, is really very dense. But uh, before I get started, I want to change the way my blanket roll is arranged. In previous episodes, you've seen me with the blanket roll arranged in a horseshoe sort of shape. And that puts the wool blanket against my body. As it's getting warmer, I want to get it away from my body, so I'm going to use what's known as a back roll. Back rolls are usually attached to a knapsack or sometimes they're put on a strap. So uh, let's go out in the garage and I'll, I'll show you what I'm doing. I attach a cotton sheet to my wool blanket with safety pins. This was the height of luxury in the 1800s for camping. I then take the wool blanket and fold it into thirds the long way. Okay, and the next thing I put in is my ground sheet. Now this is just a, a tarp, but in the old days this was called a rubber blanket and it was uh, quite precious. It was, you didn't really want to tear it, and so it was usually put on the inside of the blanket roll. And then I have another rubber sheet, modern version. I think this is called a plastic bag. And it sure serves as a good rain poncho should I need it. So I put two plastic bags in there. And then another little cloth, a t-shirt, socks, some cordage, and this is uh, hemp cordage. I'm, I'm trying to really stay away from synthetics to the extent that is practical. And then tent pegs. These are, are steel uh, tent pegs. And in the 1800s they used steel tent pegs or sometimes they, um, they, they made them out of wood, of course. Lucifer matches. And those, these were uh, commonly used in the 1800s too. And a lantern. I put all of this inside the roll, and then um, mosquito netting, and this I purchased from uh, Walmart in the fabric department. Now I take all of this, and then I just roll the blanket. I start at one end, and I do a tight roll. Okay, now to hold the blanket together, I use three belts. These are our cloth belts. Take the first strap, put it here at this end, and then tighten it. Then I take the second strap, and I tighten that again. And so once those are tight, I put the extra ends underneath so they don't get in the way. And take my shoulder strap and attach it to the other end of the first belt. And I can adjust the length to the height that I want with this strap arrangement. And then I go underneath. So this is a very simple way 
to keep a bed roll on a strap that's easy to carry and you can adjust the lengths to it by uh, adjusting this belt. My haversack came from an army surplus store. I was told it's uh, from the Russian army. I've attached a, a tin can uh, so that I can collect things along the way, all sorts of things from pine pitch to anything I run into to even getting water. Uh, one of the first things I put in are some eating utensils, some pans. And these are modern eating utensils. But this pan is similar in shape to what was used uh, during the Civil War in the 1800s. People would take their canteens and unsolder them and they'd have a little frying pan, a lightweight frying pan about the size of this one. And then here, inside this paper bag, I have parched corn. And this is enough parched corn for two days. You only take a pinch full or two at a time. And that's really tasty. And then a second little pan. And so this is about the size of the cookware that was used uh, on the trail in the 1800s. So that's the first thing in here. Then uh, uh, corn, cornmeal was a staple here so I have some cornmeal that I'll use for making um, oh, all sorts of things. Cornmeal was a, was a main food source at that time. A little container of oatmeal and uh, a cup. This is somewhat similar to the tin cups that were used in the 1800s but I decided not to use a a real tin cup because the seams look like they were soldered together and at that time they used lead solder. So I'll, I'll stick with this one. Some cordage. Lucifer matches. Candle. And here I have some potatoes. So there are about six or so potatoes and then instant soup, bouillon cubes. And again, these were used during the turn of the century. So that's, that's pretty authentic relative to what people would eat. And then for safety, <coughs> I have a, a whistle, a compass, a map, and a modern first aid kit. And I'll put those, I guess, right here. Put those right there. More Lucifer matches. And a shovel. And I have some paper with the shovel, although um, I'll probably use leaves. And a water bottle. Uh, this is oh, the, the era of the Second World War. I used this when I was a kid. Okay, this is the haversack all completed. There's enough, uh, there are enough supplies in here for two days. I'm not taking much water because I can get it from the river. Oh, there's, there's one more thing. Always, I always bring a pencil with me. And I have some paper that I can write on the map I can write on if, should I need to. I'm also taking a knife my cold steel Bushman and during the 1800s people more frequently used Bowie knives but what I like about this cold steel Bushman is of course I can use it as a spear put it on the end of my walking stick and when it's not on the end of my walking stick it'll be in its sheath on my belt I almost forgot. I need two lemons. I'll just put them in the haversack. Let's go hiking.
made it down to the river. It sure is beautiful. It's going to be fun to explore this for the next couple of days. It only took me a few minutes to find a nice tasty snack. This is Greenbrier. You eat the tips of it. It tastes a little bit like asparagus, but more mild. It's full of vitamins and minerals. This should hold me over until dinner time. Mmm, I really like it. this petrified wood wax myrtle tea potato soup My special cornmeal recipe. This is very similar to the way it was cooked 150 years ago. This is so good. It's getting late so I'm gonna get into bed. You can see I've got my little candle lit. And that's the only light I have tonight. Uh, there aren't any mosquitoes out. Now maybe it's the uh, repellent from the American Beauty Berry and the wax myrtle that's keeping them away. But anyway, I'm not going to use the mosquito netting tonight. I'm, and I'm, it's so warm I'm going to just sleep on top of the, um, of the wool blanket. So we'll see you in the morning. Hey. That's getting light. Good morning. Wow. I had a good night. 
heard the frogs and the crickets all night. It was so relaxing to hear the water too. This should be enough oatmeal. The oatmeal is really good. Mm. I need an energy drink. A little bit of water. Oatmeal. This was popular in the 1870s. It's as good today as it was then. <laughs>